Hi everyone. If you're creating a map, chances are it will need to show roads. If you've ever loaded a roads shapefile into QGIS, you probably saw something like this. This is all of the roads in the area, from highways to neighborhood streets. If you want to show all of them, that's great. But most of the time you only want to show just interstate highways like this, or major roads and minor roads. This means separating the different types or classes of road into separate shapefiles. How do you do that? With a little effort, QGIS can separate the different types of roads into separate shapefiles. You can then style them differently, such as making major roads thicker or a different color than minor ones. Before we get started, I need to talk about road shapefiles. You can find a roads shapefile for just about anywhere in the world, but they are not created equally. Some show every street in the area, others show only major roads. But the real problem isn't what the file shows, it's what it doesn't show. Separating different classes of roads involves some data manipulation. How easy or hard it is to separate them depends on the data attributes. In this video, I'll show several different ways to deal with this issue. Road shapefiles are widely available. You can get them from city, state, or county GIS websites. The census website has them for the entire U.S. One of the best places to get them is from state transportation department websites. This is usually the highest quality road data available, and that's really important. It's a good idea to get road shape files from at least two different sources, as we'll see later. Road data files are often called center lines, as on this website. Here's the North Carolina DOT website. I'm showing this because this site has a valuable extra, this PDF. It includes the routes field descriptions, otherwise known as data attributes. This is important because identifying the correct attribute to use for the separation procedure can be difficult. I'll talk more about this later. For roads, the data is usually assigned an attribute that specifies which type or class of road it is. Here's how to find that. Here I've loaded a roads shape file of Montgomery County, Maryland. I'll right click on the roads layer and select Open Attribute Table. Here's the attribute table. It looks like a spreadsheet because that's basically what it is. The table shows all of the attributes contained in the data. An attribute is a characteristic of the data. The row across the top of the table shows the different attributes. Scroll the window to the right and you'll see some attributes that are obvious, such as street name, street type, and zip code. There are also plenty that are a mystery, such as LFADD or CFCC. The good news is that for the most part, we can ignore the strange ones and focus on the obvious ones. If I scroll a little farther to the right, I see one called ST Class. This sounds like Street Class, which is the kind of thing I'm looking for. I'll click on the attribute name to sort the data by this attribute, then I'll scroll down to see the range of values. The data goes from 0 to 14. That looks about right, since road classes are almost always in numbers, and the range usually goes from 0 to about 12 or so. How can I be sure? By applying a filter to the data. Here's how to do that. I'll close the attribute window, then right-click on the roads layer and select Filter. The Query Builder window will appear. The Fields area shows all of the attributes for the data and the Values area shows the range of values for each attribute. Since we believe that ST class is the attribute we're looking for, I'll double-click on it in the Fields window. This adds it to the Expression window. Next, I'll click the All button for Values. This will show all of the possible values for the ST class attribute. Now comes the testing part. Click on the Equal sign in the Operator section. Since the value 1 is usually interstate highways, I'll double click on it to add it to the expression. My expression now says, filter the data to show only the records with a street class of 1. When I click OK, I see a few lines in the map canvas. I know these are interstate highways, so that's good so far. If you're working with an area that's unfamiliar to you, you can check this against a Google map or paper map. Next, I'll try the class 2 roads. You can see that the layer now has a little funnel. That shows that a filter is being applied to the layer. I'll click on the funnel to open the filter window again, and this time I'll change the 1 to a 2. Here's what that does. 
These are all state highways, so it looks like I'm on the right track. I'll try one more test. I'll change the number to 3. Those are all minor roads. Now I'm sure that ST class is the attribute I need to separate the data. Next, I'll remove the filter by clicking on the funnel and selecting Clear. To create a separate shapefile for each class of road, I'll use a procedure called Split Vector Layer. First, create a folder on your computer for the new shapefiles. Select the Roads layer in the Layers palette and go to Vector, Data Management Tools, Split Vector Layer. The Split Vector Layer window will appear. The input layer should be the name of your Roads file. The Unique ID field is the attribute you want to use to separate the data. We've identified that as ST class, so I'll set that now. Click on Advanced Parameters and set the output file type to SHP for shapefile. For Output Directory, select Save to Directory and navigate to the folder you created, then click OK. A note for Mac users QGIS 3.2 for Mac has a bug. Once you set the Output Directory, the Split Vector Layer window closes. Just open it again and continue. Click Run. The process will take a few seconds. When it's done, click Close. In the browser window, navigate to the new folder you created and open it to show the new shapefiles. Now for the fun part. You can delete or turn off the center lines layer and add the layers you want. Here I'll add the Class 1 roads. And now the Class 2 roads. Let's keep going. It looks like the Class 4 roads are neighborhood streets, which I don't want to show, so I'll delete that one. You can add as many or as few of the new layers as you want. Now that your roads are separated into their own layers, you can easily style them differently and add labels. Earlier, I said it's a good idea to get road shape files from at least two sources. Here's why. Here I've turned off my new road layers and also the centerline layer and turned on another road's shapefile I found for this area. At first, it looks good. In fact, it shows some streets that the centerline layer doesn't. I'll open the attribute table for this layer. When I look through the data, I don't see any attribute that looks like a road or street class. That means I can't separate this layer into separate layers, at least not easily. So this layer is useless to me. The quality of road datasets can vary widely. That's one reason I prefer to use the data from the state DOT. But always check your road data for the attribute you need before starting your map. I also mentioned a bonus PDF at the North Carolina DOT website. Here's what that looks like. This clearly identifies the attributes and also describes the different values for it. It's too bad every piece of data doesn't come with something like this, but sometimes there is information on the download site that can help make sense of the data set, so look for that. You may find yourself using OpenStreetMap data for roads. For some parts of the world, it's pretty much all there is. For this video, I'll assume you already know how to access OSM data in QGIS. If you don't, there are plenty of videos to help with that. For this map, I'll zoom into part of Halifax, Nova Scotia, one of my favorite places, using the OSM base map. Then I'll go to Vector Quick OSM to bring up the Quick OSM window. I'll start by setting Canvas Extent and running a query for all of the data. Here's what we get. I've got a roads layer now, so I'll open the attribute table. As I look through the data, I see a lot of attributes, but I don't see any attribute like road class, but there is one called highway. This doesn't use numbers. It uses names for different road types. What do these mean? You don't have to guess. There's a website that explains each road type and even shows a picture. This information makes it really easy to determine what the road categories are. With that information in hand, I can go back to QGIS and run the split vector layer procedure like I did before. The problem with this approach is OSM data doesn't always behave properly, and the quality of the data can vary widely. Instead of messing with that, I'll try a different approach. I'll delete the OSM layers except the base map 
and go to Vector Quick OSM to bring up the query window again. This time I'll use the OSM wiki page to find the exact attributes and values I want. The first one is Highway Motorway. I'll enter these into the query fields, then click Run. Don't forget to set Canvas Extent. After it runs, I get a message that there are no results. This isn't really surprising, since I didn't expect to see interstates in a downtown area. I'll try a different value, this time trunk. Again, no result. I'll keep going down the list on the wiki and try primary. This time I get a result. Secondary gives me a few more streets. A note about OSM street data. OSM always adds two layers, lines and points. The points are traffic signals, so you can delete those layers. Once you've downloaded the layers you need, you can style them as usual. Don't forget to save them as regular layers. Sometimes you can't find the data at the level you want, such as the roads or boundary for a single county. Here's how to get the data you want without stuff you don't. Let's say I need to create a map of Forsyth County, North Carolina, where I live, that shows roads. For this video, let's assume I looked at the county GIS website, but it didn't have a suitable roads file. I also couldn't find a shapefile for just the county boundary. But I was able to find data for the entire state, so I'll work with that. First, I'll add the file for the state boundary, divided into counties. The first thing I want to do is pull Forsyth County out of this map. I don't want to show the other counties. This is pretty easy. I'll right-click on the layer and open the attribute table. Right away, I see an attribute called County Name. Rather than scroll through all 100 to find Forsyth, I'll click on the county name to sort them alphabetically. Now it's easy to find the one I want. Next, I'll click on the row number, which is 34. This selects the entire row. Then I'll close the attribute table, and now Forsyth County is selected on the map. I want to save the selected county as a shapefile, so I'll right click on the layer and go to Export Save Selected Features As. The Save Vector Layer As window appears. Make sure Esri Shapefile is selected, then click on the box to the right of file name and save the file to your computer. Click OK, and the new file will be added to the map. Now you can delete the layer for the entire state. I'll turn the new county layer off for now. That takes care of the county boundary, so now we'll turn to the roads. I'll add the roads file from the state DOT website. And that looks like every road in the state. This means I have a couple of things to do here. First, I need to separate the Forsyth County roads from the rest of the state. Once I've done that, I can separate the different classes of roads into their own shapefiles. Any manipulation of the data starts by examining the attributes, so I'll open the attribute table for the roads layer. I'm looking for an attribute that identifies the county. There's one called Maint CNTYC, which might be a county identifier. I'll click on the attribute to sort them. The numbers go from 1 to 100, which is the number of counties in the state, but I don't know which number applies to which county, and I couldn't find this information in a Google search. There's also an attribute called division, so I'll sort this column. There are 14 divisions. After some more looking around on the DOT website, I learned that the North Carolina DOT organizes its work into 14 divisions, not by county. I came across this page, which lists the counties and which division they're in. It looks like Forsyth County is in Division 9, so that's a starting point. Now that I know which division I need, I can use the Filter function. I'll close the Attribute table and right-click on the layer and select Filter. I'll double-click on Division, then click the equal sign, then click All, and double-click on 9. Then I'll click OK, and now only the roads in Division 9 are visible. I'll save this as a new layer by right-clicking on the layer and selecting Export Save Features As. I'll name this layer Division 9 Roads, and this layer is added to the map. Now I'll delete the NC Routes layer. I have one more step. Forsyth County is within Division 9, but I don't know where. I'll turn the County Boundary layer on. That's the section of roads I need. To find that, I'll open the attribute table for the layer and click on the Maint CNTYC attribute to sort the column. Now when I scroll through it, I see five values, 29, 30, 34, 
80, and 85. This means that five counties make up Division 9. I can use the filter function to see which is the correct one. In the filter window, I'll double click Main CNTYC, click on the equal sign, click on all, and double click on the first one, which is 029. When I click OK, I can see if it's the correct one. It's not, so I'll click on the funnel and try the next one. Instead of starting over, I can just change the number inside the quotes to 030 to try the next one. 034 is the winner. I'll save this as a new layer. The new layer is added to the map, so I can delete the Division 9 roads layer. Now I have the border of the county and the roads within it. I can separate this roads layer into individual shapefiles using the split vector layer function like we did before. A side note, I could have used the same filtering procedure on the state roads file to find Forsyth County roads. The reason I didn't do that is because there are 100 counties and it's pretty tedious to go through all of them to find the correct one. By narrowing the data down to divisions first, I only had to look through 5 instead of 100. Thanks for watching. See you next time.